and welcome to the video. We are sowing wheat at the moment. Um, I haven't been home, so I haven't been farming, I've been studying, but here we are now. First couple of, we actually only got about 800 hectares of sowing left for the year, but I thought I'd make a quick video. I'm on the 550, We've got the 80 foot flexi coil behind us, and it is very wet at the moment. Six seven percent slip, but I was up to about 25 there about a couple of minutes ago coming up the hill. Copped a lot of rain, which is also a good thing because, as you can see, crops like that going very well, but just makes it difficult difficult to sell anything, especially in our sort of time. But we've got to do it because we've got more rain on the forecast, so hopefully, just put this last. 800 or so hectares in and then we'll be finished. It's dusty on top, we burnt this paddock just to make sure that we could get through about 50 or 75% of it burnt, so that's good, but yeah, we're in for a long night here, so everything's going well at the moment. Tell you it's working. Sewing. We've got the toe between option of the flexi coil. This is 80 feet, 5500 bar, and a. I can't remember the number of the box. Roughly 20 ton or 20,000 litres. I think like 19,800 or something. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't done. I haven't spent very much time on this machine at all. I'm usually away at sowing time, here for harvest, but it's good to get a, a few laps on it, get familiar with my, familiarise myself with it. Might stop up here and do a walk around. As you know, if you've watched my videos, we've got the 550 Snogger on the front. And then, we've got the new 5560 flexible cart, toe between, biggest one you can get toe between, with the jewels, two fans, so I think 9,800 9, litres. I had a look there, but you, oh, you can have a look. Conveyor, awesome, would never get an auger. Not that we've ever had one, but nothing can compare to that. I mean, you don't have to empty out a hopper. What's, what's not good about that? See here, the hose run back. Had to do a little bit of patchwork there before, just to get us through, you know, getting to the end of the, end of the season. It's a bit rough. Complicated folding, but uh, this machine, I think 10, 10 step procedure, you gotta get out a couple of times, but once it's folded out, it's very good. So 80 feet, this is actually the first 80 foot bar in Australia made from factory in Canada. There's other 80 footies before this one, but they were 70s extended. So that's a bit of a fact for you. Got the press wheel system across the back here. Can't remove them, unlike on the old scary bar. They do put a lot of pressure. There's a bit of mud building up on them because it is like I say, very wet at the moment. We'll obviously be waiting a few days before we 
before we'd start again if there wasn't more rain on the forecast. But there is, so we've got to go. 12 inch spacings, dual shoot. We are putting fertilizer down and seed. I don't even know. Seed in the back and fertilizer in the front. So fertilizer deeper than seed. Oh, forgive me, I'm a bit rusty. I just got here yesterday. This is my first lap actually, so thought I'd better get in before the sun goes down. Have a look there. It does a really nice even job. Seed placement is good. As good as it you can get with a time machine that is not a parallelogram bar with individual press wheels on each time. So we can have a look at here at seating depth. <sighs> Obviously not going to be going very deep considering it is so wet. We can find something. There you go. Right, there's our seed. And slightly deeper should be the fertilizer. There you go. Fertilizer depth. There. And seed depth. Roughly there. Lost it. So there's a bit of a difference there. So we'll start and then it'll kick into the fertilizer and Hopefully it grows a good crop without any misses, ideally. So, like I said, we burnt this paddock, as you can see, that's why this, this is all patchy and it, it's burnt, just so that we had a really, really great crop of wheat on here last year. Oh, we're sowing barley. I don't know if I said we're sowing wheat, that's barley. So we're going wheat, now we're sowing barley this year. Um, bit late, late barley. We had some early barley as well, but just the way that worked out, I guess. That's the way they decided to do it this year. I don't really have any involvement with it. I just turn up when I can and give a hand, basically. Yeah, but anyway, it's a good rig. I haven't really had, have had a few issues with it, I should say. The tine snap, I think there is some sort of a, I don't know, our neighbour has the exact same bar and they had heaps of trouble with the tines snapping and then they got them all replaced with some stronger tines or something and they haven't had any snaps so I think there was some sort of a fault with the tines for the year that we... I mean it's so wet, it's not even really not even really working. We had one snap this morning so what's that say? That's, that tells you that there's obviously an issue with the, with the strength of the tines. Yes, the breakout pressure is high, but not that high. Like, I mean, the facts are that if someone else has replaced all the tines and they haven't had any issues since, then obviously there was an issue with the factory tines that we were provided. Not to worry, just got to replace them. Other than that, just a gloss over. I'm not sure, I probably missed a hundred things. But that's basically a walk around. Let's get cracking. Want to get it done before the rain? Oh, it's yelling at me. For anyone considering why we got the, the toe between or wondering, this is one of the main reasons. If we can put all that in. behind you would obviously have to just do a big circle so between you can just back it straight up because there's less, less pivot points which is very handy if you get into a tight situation which does happen like so Obviously, the not so great thing about having a toe between is you can't see your bar like hardly at all. I mean, when there's a little bit of dust kicking about, you definitely can't. You can see half of it or a quarter of it out that side. 
probably a third on each side, a third in the middle, but it's a long way back. If you have any blockages, you might have an issue, and you can't also see the depth meter. So it's all good when you've got it set to auto height, but if you start bogging down a bit and you want to lift it up a bit, it's hard to tell how far you have lifted it out of the ground. Which is an issue if it's too wet, like, oh, like so. 25% will slip, we'll lift it up a bit, put it back down. Back down to 10, 11%. All right, I better focus on what I'm doing, but.